tässä näköjään lähtee sukkulat tallion suoraan eteenpäin, että tulee niinku kaivettu tuohon noin renkaaseen. I'm setting up a waypoint at a distance roughly corresponding to the edge of our warp field. When we get there, I'll deploy the first probe. systems are calibrated to receive the probe's readings. We are standing by to reproduce the warp field collapse after the first probe is deployed. Thank you, Mr. Chovak. We'll be in position shortly. And, Mr. Diaz, do take care in piloting the shuttlecraft. Now is not the time to indulge in the human penchant for joyriding. Chovak probably isn't such a fun guy to work for, huh? Lieutenant Commander Chovak's not so bad. You know, once you get used to him. And, uh, I've learned a lot working under him. I have a feeling I'm going to have to work harder to be a political animal like you, this new first officer coming aboard. Käyttänyt tuota noin niinku transporteria niinku itten sädettämiseen niinku paikalleen. Don't get me wrong. Things are definitely trending up with Commander Rydak. She's put my ideas into action. And she listened to me when your life was on the line out on the hull. It sounds like a good thing. It is. But I'm still trying to figure out if she's right for the job. She didn't go through what the rest of us did. Still got chosen to be number one. Can't tell if she was actually siding with me. Yeah, but she's lucky she didn't go through what we did. You can't hold it against her. Actually, I think I can. Even if I shouldn't. Test is running. Warp field collapse in three, two, one, mark. We there. Right, that is definitely a problem with the fabric of space. We need to get another probe out there. Okay, avaruus ei, avaruus on rikki. With two points of data, the Resolute and the probe, we've managed to get an interference pattern. I'm setting a waypoint to a particularly strong area of interference. We'll deploy the second probe there. Listen. I'm gonna give you a piece of advice I wish someone had given me. Make sure you're never just one thing. And don't get so focused on what's in front of your face that you lose sight of the big picture. Before Rydex showed up, the captain pulled me into his ready room and told me he didn't think I had the people skills to be first officer. <laughs> what a load of crap. I mean, if he'd said that about Cholak, sure. Is that why you're being so friendly to me? Politics. That would be clever, but I think you give me more credit than the captain does. You're all right, Diaz. And you've got potential. You're a capable engineer. You're good in the field. Keep up the good work, and who knows? A solid jack of all departments like you could be commander in chief of Starfleet one day. Hell, Admiral Jellico started as a shuttle pilot. And there are places to go in the middle of the I'm pretty happy where I am. You must be a glutton for punishment. Lieutenant Commander Chobok has been known to take decades to warm up to people.
Here. This is close enough. Stop the engines. Deploying the probe. Westbrook to Commander Chovak. We're ready for another sampling of data. Very good. Running the simulation again. Warp field collapse in three, two, one. On. Go home. There it is again. I saw it. It seems to be directional. Well, what about the scans? Anything? Here's the readings in relation to our local space. We've got the Resolute, Otari Prime, and the probes. All this interference is overloading the sensor buffers. We're gonna have to triangulate the sensors manually. We got something. These markers indicate peaks in the gravimetric interference patterns. Let's see if I can find some more. Puolustusjärjestelmä. Hold up. This is coming from the moon. Andromeda mieleen. Beam that blocks warp travel. Aimed right at us. Someone is doing this intentionally. I don't know how they're doing it. This is like nothing I've ever seen. We're under attack and we didn't even know it. We need to stop them. Unplug whatever it is they're hitting us with. Now, look here. It's our current readings of the ion storm. These concentrations. They line up with the interference pattern. The storm and this beam, they're coming from the same place. Carter, whatever petty local conflict brought us here, it's just a small part of something much bigger. Presently, we don't have an explanation for how they're doing this. But one thing is clear this is no fluke. Thank you, Mr. Westbrook. I want a full briefing when I'm back on board. Solano out. A targeted weapon that inhibits warp travel. Coming from the Moon Tau. That would explain the difficulties my shuttle encountered. More importantly, the tenor of the Hotari during the negotiations. And here I thought the Elidians would be the problem. I mean, the peace talks and a warship. This wasn't supposed to be so complicated. For all their posturing, every indication is that the Elidians are afraid of the Hotari. They didn't bring their warship as a threat. They brought it because they're scared. From everything we witnessed, I would say that is highly likely. But what are they afraid of? Tylus, the Hotari representative, said she thought they found something in the mines. Galvin and Sidron brought it back to the palace, but they're keeping it under tight security. She's going to investigate it. I gave her my tricorder. I expect she'll contact us soon. You found an ally. Why would Tylus help us? Just go behind her people's back? It's a fair question, considering. She doesn't like the way Galvin and Sidron have been manipulating the situation. And the Queen. Working with us to go around them isn't the same as betraying her people. Hmm. That may be true. She's certainly more likely to help than the other Hotari we've met. That raises another question. Specifically, what do the other Hotari have to gain in bringing us here, only to make this hostile maneuver against us? There must be some motivation. Unless they changed their minds between when they asked and when we got here. That's the thing. It doesn't make sense to bring us here. Tylus said that Galvin and Sidron are restricted to the mines, even to the Hotari. So they don't want anybody to learn what they've found. Then calling in the Federation is a funny way of going about it. I don't think the Elidians know what's really down on that moon either. Major Armentis said the revolt defied explanation. That the Hotari miners somehow harnessed the energy of the storm. Harnessed the energy of the storm? Doing that is beyond even... Our capabilities. So is a weapon that disrupts warp travel. 
There have been civilizations and entities, both past and present. Far more technologically advanced than the Federation. The Illidians and Hotari don't fall into that category. But that is all the more reason to investigate further. That's on the tip of my head. Commander Rydek, sorry to interrupt. We've received an urgent call from Hotari. The Queen's advisor, Tylus, has asked to speak with you. Put her through. Galvin and Citron are still with the Queen. I've enlisted help to gain access to the room they have under guard. I don't have much time. I'm not supposed to leave my post. It's only for a moment. I so appreciate your help. I found something. I'm sending you a scan. Got it. Tylus, if we needed to gain access to the mines on Tau, is there Joo. something you could help us with? Yeah, that's easy to I suppose it wouldn't be easy, but I have to go. Tylus. Can we reconnect? Sorry, Captain. We've lost all contact. We can only hope she escaped without harm. It was hard to tell. Tylus wouldn't have offered to help if she didn't know what she was doing. That's a lot of faith in someone we barely know. Let's see the scan of whatever the hell that was. Tylus suspects this came from the mines on Tau. Can I capture it, Duma? It appears to be of ancient origin, but the markings are unfamiliar. We can run a full analysis when we get back to the Resolute. But if this came from the mines, then it might be the key to how they got the upper hand against the Illidians. Then we have to go into the mines. The Federation would not allow that. We were, after all, sent here to be a neutral party in a peace negotiation. However, we could demonstrate that the Hotari have acted in bad faith. Which would enable us to investigate the mines on Tau with full justification. But of course, we would need conclusive proof before taking action. Whatever this artifact is may be proof enough, at least to satisfy the Federation. Especially if we can show the Hotari are controlling the warp disruption. And the Federation is very clear about the warp disruption. Warp disruption is the best. But a mission to the mines, covert or otherwise, is not out of the question. Okay. And I will handle the Federation. As I was telling Carter, I want all the data I can get on this war problem. And the negotiating team's shuttle has been recording data all the way back from Hotari. Even better than our probes. So pull the sensor and engine ISOs from the Melville when it sets down. We'll do. I'll join you and Chovak down in engineering to run another analysis after the briefing. I didn't like this warp problem when we thought it was some astronomical anomaly, and I like it a hell of a lot less now that we know someone is doing it to us. How does it work? What do we even do about it? What do you say we pull these chips and find out? Took some damage on the way. That ionic interference scored the hull plating. Might be some micro welds. Let's try pulling together. All right. Three, two, one. It won't budge. Gotta be the storm damage. We need to. Welcome back. Any excitement down on the surface? Excitement? No. Nothing like that. Hey, can you hand me the EJ7 interlock from the toolbox? I don't know what that is. Not much use for one on a security detail, huh? Carter? Yeah, I'll get it.
vähän tyttöystävää pitää piristää. Okei, okay. I'll apply pressure while you decouple the panel. These isolinear chips down to engineering. No problem. You really know everything about these ships, don't you? The tools, the systems. Like a walking Starfleet technical manual. Well, what can I say? I'm good at what I do. <laughs> I can see that. Come on, start pulling chips. I don't know your Substance is a quantized spin crystallization of hydrogen, carbon, and lithium. It's emitting tetrametric pulses at an interval of 3.8422 seconds. Quantized crystallization isn't natural. I mean, it's only theoretical Quanti as a means to engineer matter on a subatomic level. What's it doing in there? Quantikristalliton. Otaa sekäte. Wait. Regulation 364, subsection 9. What? Regulation 364, subsection 9 orders that in the case of an unknown foreign substance infiltrating a sealed system, it will be placed in secure confinement before further examination. Yeah. Retrieve a containment module. No. Don't you think we're more equipped to deal with whatever this is? No. Before anything else, this is a security issue. You don't even know what this is. Which is why we need to study it. Once it's contained. Well, if it's not natural, then someone might have put it there. It could be a tracking device. Some kind of sabotage. Or even a bomb. Which is why we need to get it to the containment lab. Come on. I can't make an exception. Not even for you. I'm still going to report these crystals to Commander Westbrook when we send the shuttle data. And I will inform my superiors. I'm taking this just as seriously as you are. No, I never heard talk about the idea disruption idea of the shuttle. Now these crystals? Maybe this situation is more than we can handle with just a science vessel. We could call. Get Starfleet to send more ships? Or I could send a message to my old CO on the Adirondack. Get some combat tested vessels. Miranda, you gotta be more careful. If someone hears that, they could think you're talking mutiny. I'm just trying to figure out how we can help. Okay, stand back. Get this to the containment lab. We'll get it set up for you. I'll let you know when it's safely confined. Oh, we'll be there. Last thing you want is to study this down in main engineering and have it explode next to the warp core. Dio, ne tupaina kone huoneessa tutkimaan kaikki oudot artefaktit. Jaha. Oh joo, toi 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 kannatti. Can't have that. For a second, I thought she'd gone cold on you. <laughs> Nipa. 
Like she might have changed her mind. Yeah. But I guess this whole situation has her spooked. Maybe she knows more than us. Or it's because this is all happening so fast. Now you can't tell me you're not a little spooked, too. We all should be. Believe me, I'm taking it seriously. But Miranda talking about sending a distress call on her own? No, no, sorry, love, that's not going to. too far. She was probably just thinking out loud. I'm sure she'll come to her senses. This mission has enough complications stacking up. Now we'll get through it. You, me, and Miranda too. Hmm. Commander Rydeck was able to work behind the scenes during the negotiations and made contact with a representative from the Hotari delegation named Tylus. She mentioned an unusual artifact of unknown origin being held under tight security within the Hotari Palace, which she believes came from the mines on Tau. Now, this artifact might have a connection to the revolt, to the storm, and to the warp disruption we now know has been targeted at the Resolute. Commander Rydick, if you want to take it from here. Of course. Tylus managed to infiltrate the heavily guarded location within the palace and sent us these scans using my tricorder. It appears to be some sort of control panel, possibly connected to the warp disruption weapon originating on Tau. Of particular interest is this symbol, which we couldn't identify the origin of. The Federation database has records from a vast number of civilizations. If anyone from Starfleet has come across this before, the system should recognize it. Cross-referencing with Federation records. Displaying symbols from Federation database with a 90% probability of match or higher. Select a symbol to further analyze. Ninety-nine point two percent match. Got it. Tikon Empire. So, what are we looking at? Except the design and composition indicate this is a glyph associated with the ancient Tikon Empire. Their civilization collapsed over six hundred thousand years ago, but once spanned millions of systems with a population numbering in the trillions. Fascinating. The Tikon were once the most advanced most powerful civilization in the galaxy. Is it possible the Hotari found Takan technology? I wonder if they even know what they have. Our knowledge of the Takan is limited. I have only encountered passing references to them. Actually, I've heard of the Takan. You have? Quite impressive, Commander. Enterprise to... Computer, summarize Joo, the Enterprise D's discovery of a Takan outpost. On Stardate 41386.4, the USS Enterprise D under the command of Captain Jean-Luc Picard discovered a Takan outpost in the Delphi Ardu system. According to the mission summary, an unbreakable energy draining field was deployed against the Enterprise and a Ferengi ship. The Enterprise was only able to escape after negotiating their release with an entity known as Portal 6-3, Guardian of the Takan Empire. Unbreakable energy draining field. It starts to make sense. What else is there? There's a lot here. Let's take it piece by piece. Select the aspect you wish to learn more about. Someone from the Takan Empire is actually still around. Or at least was, 16 years okay, ago. Okay, what does it then? Computer, what other information do you have on Portal 6-3, Guardian of the Takan Empire? The entity known as Portal 6-3 is of an unknown nature. A biped humanoid, he was unaware that the Takan Empire no longer existed at the time of the encounter. 
He was able to control the crystal-based technology of the Takan outpost through apparent telepathic means. It was by his choice that the Enterprise was released from the energy draining field after Commander William T. Riker of the Away Team argued on behalf of both Starfleet and the Ferengi. Telepathic control of their technology. The technology to capture and hold the Federation flagship would have to be unbelievably powerful. Computer, what else can you tell us about the energy draining field the Takan used? The Enterprise D was unable to break free on its own. The precise nature of the technology was never fully understood. Only that the crystalline technology used was beyond the comprehension of then current Starfleet science. The engineering team found a quantized spin crystal formation in the shuttle you took to Hotari. They registered tetrametric radiation coming from it. We have Takan technology on board right now? We might. I'll run a full analysis in the containment lab. Okay, eli, eli tää on itse samaan aikaan kun <laughs> Star Trek Lower Decks. <laughs> there appears to be some sort of restriction order from Starfleet. Computer, explain this restriction. A Starfleet directive similar to General Order 7 forbids entering the Delphi Ardu system or attempting to make contact with Boy, Portal 63. Starfleet doesn't throw up a no trespassing sign for just anybody. Uh -huh. I suppose it makes sense considering what happened to the Enterprise D. Ei oikeastaan. Meinaan, meinaan niin, niin. Ellei Enterprise ole löytänyt jotain, jotain tota noin, niin kuin teknologiaa sieltä. What sort of planet is Delphi Ardu 4? Delphi Ardu 4 is an M-class planet, a barren rocky world with little to no vegetation and frequent ion storms. The giant crystals that grow there absorb energy, but it is not understood how they do so. The entire Delphi Ardu system, consisting of 11 planets, was considered completely uninhabited until the encounter with Portal 63. Frequent ion storms. That can't just be a coincidence. The Elidians should have crushed the revolt. But if the Hotari have Takan technology and can control it, I see why they're willing to negotiate peace. For all we know, this could be just the beginning. And we're up against something greater than we can imagine. This kind of power in Hotari hands, it could be dangerous for everyone. Agreed. Which is why we should find a way to neutralize it if we can. If it helps, we've been able to triangulate the source of the ionic interference and warp disruption to a specific mine on Tau. Engineering used the latest data from your shuttle to pinpoint its origin. There. So we know where to look. <sighs> We need to know what's down there, what the Hotari are hiding, to better understand what we're up against, and to neutralize it if we can. Captain, embarking on a mission to the Hotari moon would not be viewed favorably by either side. However, given the circumstances, we are entirely within our rights to defend ourselves. I just want to make sure this doesn't blow up in our faces, which is why I'm thinking of sending Commander Rydek on a covert mission to Tau. Assuming you're up to the task. It would require absolute secrecy. And obviously, it's not without risk. I'll get the away team in and out. They're in safe hands with me. Under normal circumstances, that would be the case. But given the sensitive nature of this incursion, I'm afraid you'll have to go it alone. I'm hoping Tylus can accompany you. The priority is to avoid detection. It's a calculated risk. The last thing we need is to get caught and then blamed for violating our neutrality and aggravating an already tense situation. We can't afford any mistakes, which is why I've chosen you. Tylus will be essential to my success. Not only her knowledge of the mines, but her ability to gain access, particularly now that we know which mine we need to get into. Make sure she understands the need to keep this covert. She's not going to want her people to know about this. Get in touch with Tylus and make the necessary arrangements as discreetly as possible. Bridge to Captain Solano. 
The Illidians have moved additional ships to the edge of the Hotari system. Current heading is straight for the homeworld. Understood. It would seem we no longer have the luxury of waiting. In that case, may I suggest you and I return to Hotari Prime? Doing so will provide Commander Rydek as much time as possible to complete her mission. Agreed. We'll hail the Queen's delegation from my ready room. We all know what we need to do. Dismissed. Panokset kasvaa. 